Hello and welcome to Art Show. I'm Craig Stover, and today I have with me Gary Spilka. Hey, hi, hi, Craig. How are you today? <laughs> I'm I'm great. I'm really great, great to see you. I want to share some work of yours right away, so people can get an idea of the kind of stuff that you do. So when I first saw your work, I was blown away by the uh, the, the the not only the colors that you use, but just these shapes, these reworked shapes that are over and over, the negative spaces in it, it just, it's very dynamic. Um, so I went online and I chose a couple of images of yours uh, that I thought were interesting. Can you tell me a little bit about this particular piece? Yes. Um, this piece, this, I think, believe this was um, early pandemic or I finished it up then. Mm. Um, I tend to uh, work around issues around relationships with people, with uh, communities. But this was uh, a series I did on inner conversations, repeated in inner conversations. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I started really personally, really embracing a, a more direct, abstract, figurative notion and direction here i kept going to it and resisting it and i said well i'm going there <laughs> so, so i started going there more bravely and um i i i just you know the shapes are simple and the um i was really into playing with how i could explore light in a, a really exciting way with color Mm -hmm. and, and yeah. a more neutral or grayscale you know, figure. You mentioned abstract figure. So mm -hmm. does your work always start with the figure? Yes. I would say figure and color. Okay. So and, and more so, more so and more so. Are, Very likely. are yeah. you hoping that is the figure supposed to be seen or is it just so abstract that's not your goal? I just, I think the shapes are beautiful unto themselves. Yeah, they really are. I mean, now that you're, because you said that, I'm wondering like, is that one curve a shoulder? Is that curve a leg? It, am I going down the right path in trying to identify that? If it suggests something to you, great. Okay. You know? And um, I didn't want to direct a whole lot. I wanted to suggest. Mm -hmm. So one could take their own, narrative and experience it and mm -hmm. begin to you know dive into it in one <laughs> way or another so yeah well the colors are wonderful and i also love the fact that you're using not just blacks but grays and, and different types of grays um that really does uh work for me <laughs> so uh here's a little something different oh this one makes me laugh actually <laughs> why so? um well um, first of all, uh, this is very early on in this area of work that I was doing, and I'm, I'm, I, I haven't done it in a while. This, it was getting away from the more strictured, and, I, and sometimes it feels strictured, constructions of quilting. Mm -hmm. The discipline of working with those shapes is really delicious in a mm -hmm. way for me in many ways. But it, the process is so constricting. I, I started doing some um, silk screen dye printing. Well, use, using a particular process, which I won't bore you with, but it was dye printing and painting more directly. And, mm -hmm. and you know, it was really, really a blast. Um, it, this looks fun. I mean, this looks like as an artist myself, this looks like it was fun to make and it's fun to watch. I mean, those colors are just, they're working for me. All the subtleties of the blues that are there. Um, it's a dynamic piece. Does this oh, also start with a figure? Yes. Hmm. Interesting. Are you, are you using the figure with um, the negative shape as well? Or is the colored mostly the figure? For me, you know, I studied architecture. Uh huh. 
is one of as part one of the things I studied in my education. But so I'm always look looking for a dark as a solid, a wall, so to speak, or a, a dark as a figure. Mm -hmm. And something like this. So the light would be the ground or the space mm. for, me, mm -hmm. for me. And you know, so it's and then you know, anything in between is a variation in space. <laughs> but, but um there's, you know, I think what I see a lot in my work is that higher contrast of solid and void for me. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. middle ground is, you know, I still don't go there a lot, but I'm going there more lately too. But um, anyway, yes. Yeah, so, but it does, it starts with two things for me often. Mm. Well, figure ground together, but also mm. color. Mm. So speaking of color, that I think that's what I was attracted to your work to begin with, because a lot of times when people talk about, oh, that artist is a colorist, oftentimes what they really mean is uh, I find that they're talking about artists who use either saturated colors or you know out of the tube kind of a thing but i think your sensibilities for color are are different they're they're much higher in in terms of the fact that you're using you know four or five different shades of a brown within say like this picture or something it's really it it's exquisite because it really makes the eye run around so tell me about this particular piece because i love this one how, first off how big is this have it right outside my door. Actually, okay. <laughs> it's about it's about maybe thirty by thirty. Okay. 30. It, it, I love this piece too. Yeah, it's a killer. Are most of your pieces around that size? That oh no, no, but no. Um, most are smaller. Most are are much larger. Most are about eight by eight feet. Oh, okay. Or uh, I've I've moved in from that to be more like four by six okay. um, uh, or I have some, most of them are four by six these days or four by four. Right. I do have some smaller ones, but I, I like the gesture, but you have to remember, I my paintbrush is a rotary cutter, a large mm -hmm. rotary cutter. Okay. And I like the gesture of the oh, yeah. large shape. So I have to go, big enough so I can get a couple of, you know, one large something in there. And, you know, so, so the scale at this point mm -hmm. um, reflects, you know, a comfort with, I think, just moving like that and a, and a getting more simple as well. I totally get that. I mean, there's a huge difference between making a curve like this and making a curve, you know, it's so much more dynamic. And, and, you know, at this age, in my at the point in my life, I'm so excited I can still do that. So yeah. <laughs> Speaking of fantastic shapes, I think one of the other things that I really appreciate about your work is the layering. You know, it's it's flat, but you you are you're implying space uh, through the use. Oh, of thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not you know, you're not you're not. You're not talking about volume, but you're hinting at it, right? You're... It's really tricky with, you know, these kind of flat colors, but it can be done. <laughs> oh, yeah, it really works. I you know I love the this main central shape. Uh, I started when I first saw this. Uh, there's an artist, uh, 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 Mark O'Reilly. Uh, I really started to think about his, those kind of curved shapes that are in it. Do you mostly look at... Um, are you looking at other fiber artists, other quilters, or do you have a much wider view? Oh, um, much wider view, much wider view. What do I figure? I, I look at, actually, I don't look at any quilters except, uh, you know, maybe one or two good friends uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, because they approach it as artists, actually. Yeah, I can and, see. And um, mo mostly I'm looking at, everything <laughs> you know uh but i um you know i'll tell you i started this work later in life but if mm -hmm. if if i were to do it now it would be probably i'd be a sculptor because i think i love three-dimensional form more than mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so uh you know that's yeah 
And lastly, this piece is kind of a combination. Now, is this, ask me, uh, so I'm curious, is this a later piece? Is this a, or a, a more it's relatively recent? Recent, yeah. 21, I think. I I got that sense because it, I feel that the shapes are a little bit more sophisticated than some of the older pieces. In, in, yes. In terms of simpler, you know, sometimes you don't have to say as much, but you can you can say more with less. And I really enjoy that. And especially, again, I can see those color palettes again. You've got lots of different types of oranges, and that really plays off those those aquas. Uh, solid piece. Is this also one of the larger ones? No, that's actually relatively small. Wow, but I'm picking the small ones. So, yeah, that's a small one. That is about two by three and a half, I think. Okay. Yeah, it's, yeah, that is a nice one. Thank you. <laughs> well, I have... This question was actually for later on, but I want to ask it now. Mm -hmm. uh, have you ever explored using these quilts, but then maybe turning them into, say, prints? I did actually a little bit with Cindy. Okay. Cindy yeah. yeah. I would love to see those. That's a great idea. This would make an excellent, I mean, the price point for collectors you know change you open up a new market but i think this would just be so oh, great is so short though <laughs> <laughs> there's so many great things to do but that's yes, that is like, true like you know it just <laughs> so let's let's start that's great that's a great idea though i would love to see it so we can talk about that later so let me start the conversation where i love to begin which is actually your beginning um one of the things I find fascinating is a lot of times how artists get their start helps me understand the work that they do, because there's always that sort of common thread. So I want to know, when you were young, did you ever have one of those sort of uh, thunderbolt moments where you were exposed to art and it sort of opened you up? Well, I just did it. You know, okay. I, you know, I, I was really a si science kid growing up. I mean, that's oh, okay. I'm, as a kid labeled, I, you know, I was one of these kids that you don't, you don't become an artist when you grow up, but I did it anyway. Oh, I didn't go okay. to school for art mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. um, I had a Venus paradise coloring set. I, I invented things to make crafts from. I did mosaics with eggshells. Okay. <laughs> uh -huh. eggshells. And then, you know, I, I did take art lessons in, you know, the local museum that was nearby where I grew okay. up. And, you know, I excelled in summer camp. And I went to college, though, at a university mm -hmm. that was good for science and art. I went to Carnegie Mellon. For what kind of science? Biology. Biology. Okay. Do you think that that has any play in, say, the shapes that you choose? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. very much so. I mean, but I, I, my, I have a very odd pathway. My pathway, you know, I went to school. I showed up at Carnegie Mellon in 1968. Okay. Who knew how big the freaking world? Was? <laughs> <laughs> how complicated <laughs> things were. You know, I grew up in Yonkers, New York, in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. You know, this was really far away to me. Yeah. But, you know, I, I got very involved in the social movements and, you know, equity issues and mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. I, I got involved in, in psychology and sociology and social mm -hmm. change. And that sounds like perfect to line up within your work. So, but, but I, I, I ran, I ran a consulting practice. Uh, in philanthropy and social change nationally mm. for 35 years after I studied architecture it had a lot to do with community building I did that for 35 years and then eventually got back to my art again so at, at what, when Through did you finally say I'm an artist now probably in about uh 20 oh, oh, 28 tw 2008 Okay. And you're I was working full time then too. I retired 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. I've been it's... doing it full time. Most of the artists I've ever spoken with, they all have day jobs, right? <laughs> There's like yeah. maybe three that can support themselves. 
So you had mentioned that you didn't go to art school. Uh, I studied are, architecture at Penn, though. But the processes that you use for your work now, is that self-taught? I studied with Nancy Crow, who is an art quilt, a, a, a quilt artist. She's amazing. She teaches quilt art. Okay. You know, as a Beaux Arts, you know, with with you know, as a formalist design material, and which is good enough technique, and you pick mm -hmm. it up from other people, and mm -hmm. you you know, you learn some things through people who really know how to sew. So. Yeah. You had mentioned that you have a, a large cutter. Are there other like go-to tools that you always have that you always use? What What do you a use? Mac, a board, a sewing machine. I do this all by sewing machine. Oh, okay. An iron. How many um, machines do you have? I have two. I just have two. I don't do the quilting. I work with someone else. You You outsource that. But so yeah. you're, yes. but you're the artist of it all. So yeah, I, you know, I, I, I sew the top together. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And I work over a photo. Tell me when you want me to stop. No, <laughs> that works. And then I sew, oh, I, I photo it and I talk about what my intention is in a drawing and, a, and some notes and what color okay. I want her to use in different sections and the, the way I want her to work vertically or horizontally, what lines I want emphasized. Okay. Working with her for many years. She has a huge machine like that would, you know, 12 feet the whole room. Yeah. Right, yeah. And she has it more than that. She has the temperament for it. I oh, would kill true. myself. <laughs> <laughs> you need somebody like that. So wait, back me up a little bit. Say you're in your studio. You're going to make something new. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the process? I, what, okay. what, I have a design wall. Okay. But what sparks that creativity? Uh, and I'll give you an example. I have artists that'll tell me, well, I need to take a walk to get creative. And others will say, oh, for me, it's literature or something else. What is it that gets those creative juices flowing for you? Just doing the work. Re just sitting yeah, down. Yeah. I'm very, I'm one of these people. I get up and I do it every day, no matter what, you know, okay. do a little something. I just walk into my studio. I have like my fabric shapes hung up by different color all over my space, right? Okay, all right. They're, they're gorgeous, you know, um, or I'll look at, you know, pictures of things that I, where I left off last time. Okay. And I'll say, oh, I want to do more of that. I'll get a new idea just by looking back at what I've done. I'm looking at things all the time. I don't think, I, nothing, nothing inspires me other than just, looking and doing the work I, how, I i there's so much i want to do right yeah i mean it's it's limited <laughs> so yeah. the shapes that you use what mm -hmm. i'm curious to know is are you thinking of those shapes and then making them out or are, are you experimenting to find the shapes i have a lot of shapes that i've been using okay. regularly so you might make a shape and then put it aside to use it. I'm, I'm often not... I do. It doesn't work right. for that thing. But I'll have it, you know, I'll start often with black. And I'm, you know, right now for the past year, I've just work, been working in gray tones or, mm. or neutrals. That's funny. And, Me too. That's funny. Isn't <laughs> What's it? The, it's, the zeitgeist it, about that. It, yeah, I'm really, I'm, I'm really into it. So it, at, at what point do you find that um, as, as you're doing the mock-up, or maybe even later, uh, I assume it has to, you have to accept what you're doing at certain processes, at certain times. I photograph it, you know. I I but do you, ever, do you get to a point where it's like you realize it's not working and then you have to either back up or discard it? Oh, sometimes, you know, I, I, I leave it on the wall before I, you know, for a few days, okay. if I'm happy with it or I'll sit with it. And I, okay. I, I photograph it along the way. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll have to strip it down to where I started from too. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to see those photographs used in prints. So we can, we can talk about that later. No, really, so, that's, what a great idea. Since you've been doing this for several years now, have you found that your process, how you start and finish your work, has that remained consistent or has it changed over the years? Changed this year. Okay. The process has changed. Just a little bit. Okay. And we're in terms of what? I got an iPad with Procreate. I just I went okay. to I went on a residency last year to Mass Mocha. Mm -hmm. 
for a whole month. And there was this one gal using Procreate to do a lot of drawing. Mm -hmm. And so I said, oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to teach myself how to use that because I had an iPad and I, mm -hmm. I, I had a pencil and I couldn't for the, you know, I couldn't figure out how to. So I took, I signed up for a course and of course, it's so damn complicated. <laughs> I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> But I've always found they have a hundred buttons. You only need like 10. <laughs> <laughs> 20 layers. Who gives a damn? About uh, yeah. Who does? So, just <laughs> let me make my marks and <laughs> go over it. Anyway, save it and go over it. Anyway. Uh -huh. So, um, so I sort of doing drawings on old photos. Okay. All right. And I've been working off of those for um, my black and white grayscale. Yeah. Palette. Um, I, I have a gallerist that I work with in New York also, and um, he was very interested in what I could, because I was working in these neutrals anyway, and he wanted to see what I could do. So, you know, rather than invest in, um, you know, this is very uh, tedious construction work, and I can come up with many designs and drawings, but the construction, and it's expensive. Yeah, oh, so, yeah. So I started just generating ideas before I decided which ones I wanted to invest in. Mm -hmm. And the iPad really allowed me to okay. do work kind of at a, you know, schematic, croaky sense, mm -hmm. and thumbnail, which was, you know, some, some of these give you energy, some of them don't. Some, mm -hmm. you realize what is not right about it. You could take a piece of it and rework it. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. So the iPad was great for is great for that for me. So you have a work of art, and mm -hmm. I don't know if this is going to be an easy or tough question for you, but do you have any specific hopes for the viewer, the people who look at your work? Are you hoping that they engage your work in a certain way? Are you are you trying to are you hoping they're going to get a message out of your work, or is it just pleasantries? What what's your what's your desire? Well, one, I just I want people, many of them, there, there's an energy in the work. Mm -hmm. I want people to feel that, but I kind of want people to be in the work too. A lot of it is at the scale and it invites an entry. Um, so you're hoping they might get lost in the shapes and colors in the same and way. Maybe, and look for the story that invites them in too. I mean, I, I think one thing that is really, I'm, this is what I hope. Uh -huh. I, don't, I don't know. And I, I haven't really said this to too many people, but, you know, I, I'm a modernist. I definitely think I'm a modernist, but I am not an ultra modernist. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I think I'm on the cusp of abstract figurative. I think young people today seem to really want to be so figurative. They just are in your face with what they want. <laughs> and Sorry, yes. <laughs> I, 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 I don't, I, you know, I, I, it's not that simple and I don't really care what, you know, let, let people, you know, work to figure you out a little bit and figure out the story. So, so, you know, I, I let people construct some of their own story and, and invest in it a little but bit. But you're leaving it loose enough that you're allowing people to. But just see, or them. not, or just enjoy the shape, yeah. you know? You and I are very similar in, in that regard. Um, I have the same exact thoughts. Uh, curious to know when you're making your work, you're in your studio, you're making it. Um, <laughs> do you zone out or are you so present that you're, you have a very specific mind track? No, no I'm, I'm, I'm really, oh, I have to stay alert. Mm. Okay. You know, particularly during the construction. Yeah. You know, because um, I could get hurt. <laughs> 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 One, um, you know, I have some very, so often very precise seams. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I have to do, I have, it's not like I'm even exactly measuring, but I'm, I'm sort of registering. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not unlike printmaking in that way, but I'm having to sew in relation to you know several other pieces, yeah. <laughs> moving targets. So 
Well, I, I get it. And the reason I, you know, just yesterday I was talking to an artist and we related it to like a highway hypnosis. Like you, you know, you finish a piece, but you don't remember how you got there to finish it. Sometimes that does happen, but. Uh, but you, you know, I mean, you know, the th this will probably a longer conversation, but the more you work within a certain arena, yeah. you it is less conscious because you just know yeah. how to do these same kinds of things over and over again. You find yourself making the same kinds of work and construction gets more of the same too. That's true. So uh, speaking of doing things over and over again, uh, we have time for just one final question, but it's over and over. It's the same question I ask a lot of artists. It's real simple. What does making art do for you? I, I used to say it just brings me so much pleasure when I, I lose myself, but it, I just, I take it too seriously. <laughs> <It's not laughs> really, I torture myself with it sometimes too. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. But, and, you know, I also feel like, I, you know, I, I feel what a luxury it is to just be able to oh, invest yeah. myself in that yeah. at this point in my life. I couldn't yeah. have allowed that when I was younger, you know, I think. I get it. So uh, that was my last question, but I have one final, final question, which is, do you find yourself speeding up your production as you get older or are you slowing down? It's an interesting question. <laughs> well, first of all, you have to tell me how old are you? I'm um, 52. 73. Okay. Okay. I'm getting more efficient in decision-making okay. all yeah. around. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. I get it. No. So, all around, I, I, I'm making work with less pieces. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My images are bolder, stronger. Mm -hmm. I can work. see it. Yeah. If you saw this, but you haven't seen recent work. No, I'm waiting for yeah. you to update your website. Now I want a photo of your studio on that site. I want to see, I want to see the yeah. piles of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at my Instagram. Right, but, I will. Uh, I'll definitely. Well, yeah. I, I'm sorry to cut you off, but, uh, I, I can't thank you enough for for taking it's the time. Been, yeah, oh, really. Oh, you're an interesting person. <laughs> I, I appreciate. It. No, you're the interesting one. That's what <laughs> uh, so I want to thank you for coming by to talk to me today, and I also want to thank everybody who tuned in to watch our conversation today. We love having you watch uh, our show, especially if you like and subscribe. That really helps push us forward. If you have any questions uh, for the artists today, you can always put them in the comment section. If I can't answer them, I can pass them along. So again, thank you so much for coming by today to talk to me. I really appreciate it. Adios. Adios.